I love using all different types of lures, but for me, the most exciting types of lures to use to catch pike and other predatory species on are top water lures. So we're talking lures like poppers, stick baits, and walk the dog style baits. Now today, we're gonna to be fishing on a big gravel pit, and it's very shallow. Most of it's only sort of like two or three foot deep on average. You have got some deeper areas, and you've got some shallow bars as well. And we're gonna be targeting pike with two different lures. So, the first of those is the Salmo Fury Pop. It's a popper. You can also fish it walk the dog style too. And we're also going to be using the Salmo Bass Bug, which is a shallow diving crankbait that creates a fantastic wake on the surface. And hopefully, we're going to cover this lake and come across a few fish. Well, sometimes on these shallow gravel pits, you often see the pike bow wave behind your lure and take it, but this one just absolutely slammed it. It was just a huge explosion on the surface, and it was at long range as well, so I thought it could be a big fish, but it's still a nice fish, um, very long and lean, but it's all about the takes when you're fishing top water lures, and this one was no exception. It was a brilliant take, and we'll, I think we'll get this one back now and see if we can get another one. Well, I've just caught the first fish of the day on the Fury Pop, which is a new topwater lure that's recently come out from Salmo. Um, there's a few really interesting features about this popper that make it quite unique. So the most noticeable one is that it's got this unique flocking finish to it. So it almost feels like material in a way. Um, it doesn't feel like a standard lure or hard bait wood. And what this does is that it helps slow the lure down when you pop after each twitch of the rod tip and it enables you to impart a really good walk the dog action into the bait. The Fury Pop has a large concave face to it so when you jerk the rod tip down aggressively it creates a large boil and if you keep doing that retrieve it's going to create a massive bubble trail. You can fish it a little bit more delicately as well so smaller twitches will give it a fantastic zigzagging motion like a walk the dog retrieve and you can fish it that way too. The Fury Pop comes fitted with Mustad KVD trebles, super sharp, super strong, and it's a fantastic lure for targeting a lot of predatory species, specifically largemouth bass, which is what the Fury Pop was designed for, but it also works really well for pike too in the summer months on shallow gravel pits like this one, and that's why we're using the Fury Pop today. It's available in six different colors, I've chosen the horny toad colour to start with because there's a lot of frogs and toads in this gravel pit and that is what the pike feed on because it's so shallow um, as well as bait fish and ducklings as well that are swimming along the surface. So that's why I've decided to start with the horny toad colour. The Fury Pop's really aerodynamic so on a light balanced bait casting setup like what I'm using today I'm going to be able to cast a long way which is really important it's going to allow me to reach snags, trees and overhanging bushes on the other side of this small lake and that's where a lot of the pike sit and hopefully if there's a pike there you should see this fury pop and have a look. So the way I like to fish the fury pop is by casting out And then often, if I've cast to an area that looks really fishy, once the lures hit the water, I'll just leave it for a few seconds, because often that initial splash is enough to get a pike interested. Anyway, after I've left it a few seconds, I'll keep the rod tip down and then just make short, aggressive twitches. And what that will do is that that will get the lure swimming on a zigzag action which is called walking the dog. 
but also you can pause the lure and if I jerk the rod tip aggressively I can get a much bigger splash. Because of the flocking on the popper, after each pop it will help the lure slow down so after each pop it won't glide out the way or it won't glide out of tune, it will help it keep the lure in place. And with the two different styles of retrieve, what I like to do is kind of mix it up. So I'll often give it one or two big pops, pause it, then start walking the dog with the popper, then pausing it again, big pop, pause, big pop, pause, and just mixing it up really, trying different retrieves and seeing what works best on the day. So this is the Salmo Bass Bug. It's a very unusual looking lure. It's basically like a cylinder with a diving vein at the front of it. Although the diving vein on this lure is heading almost straight down. So that means it's not gonna dive very deep at all. In fact, this Bass Bug is designed just to create a wake on the surface. It's a wake bait. So when you're winding this back, it sort of shimmies from side to side and it creates an absolutely fantastic looking wake that just makes it look like a, a duckling or a small rat swimming across the surface. It's a great choice of topwater lure when you think something like a popper is a little bit too much. It's creating a little bit too much vibration, whereas the bass bug's a little bit more subtle. It's got a really loud rattle and it weighs 26 grams, so for a lure that's only 5.5 centimetres in length, 26 grams is actually quite heavy, that's nearly an ounce in weight. But on a light balanced outfit like the one I'm using today, this lure is going to cast an absolute mile. So some types of lures are not able to cast as far because they're not as aerodynamic or they're not as heavy and they've got like bulkier sort of profiles to them. The bass bug is different. You can cast a really long way and reach areas that other lures probably wouldn't be able to reach. Again, like the Fury Pop, it, it comes armed with a Mustad KVD treble. Just the one treble on this lure, as it's quite small. And it's made out of a high impact plastic, so it's literally bulletproof. So any pipe that's gonna take this is definitely not gonna destroy it. There's five different colors in the range. So there are brighter colors, that I would probably use on a gravel pit or if I'm fishing a venue that's quite murky and I want the lure to show up that little bit more. And there's also some duller colours too, which is what I've got on at the moment that I'm using on this gravel pit, which is almost crystal clear. So this is what I'm gonna use now and we'll give it a go. We've just got into a new swim and I've got quite a lot of water to cover either side of me here. So I've got one bay to my left and one bay to my right. But I think this would be a good place for me to talk to you about how I'd fish the Salmo bass bug. So I'm gonna cast it out, cast a mile, and then I'm just gonna keep the rod tip fairly low and just wind it back on a steady retrieve and it's creating a fantastic wake across the surface as it's shimmying from side to side. I can stop it, pause it, give it a twitch, pause it, and kind of mix up my retrieve a little bit as well, but generally just fishing on a straight retrieve is a pretty good way to go. But this time of year you can find quite a lot of flotsam on gravel pits, so if you want to keep the flotsam off your line and stop it from clogging up your reel, just keep the rod tip up a little bit, especially when your lure's a long way out. And then the closer the lure comes to the rod tip, just lower it down. So if you do get a bite, you've got plenty of leverage to strike if a fish hits close to the bank. When I'm casting, I generally have a very short distance between the lure and the rod tip with a bait casting outfit. So I've only actually only got about an inch or so from the rod tip to the trace. And then I've got the trace below and then the lures on the end of the trace. And what that's gonna enable me to do with this moderate action rod is to load it up and that'll help me get a further distance when I'm casting out. 
When using lures on a light bait casting outfit like this one, it's important to have the thumb bar set right on your bait casting reel. So some people like it really loose, some people like it really tight. But generally, if you're starting out, you want to have it fairly tight so that when you cast out, you're not getting a, an overrun of the braid coming off of the spool because that will end up in a bird's nest. Generally, I have it quite loose because I'm quite used to casting a bait casting outfit. But if you're starting out, I'd generally say have it fairly tight so you don't get many overruns and also so that you can control the lure as it's casting out. Well, we've had a great time fishing on this gravel pit today. The fishing's been quite tough, but you know, we've had fish on the Fury Pop, now the Bass Bug, and you know, it's such an exciting way to catch fish. Definitely the most exciting way to catch a fish on a lure. Seeing a fish take off the top is one of the most exciting things about lure fishing. It's more about the take really than the fish, but I mean, this is a nice way to sign off the day. So in the summer months, when you've got a hot sunny day like today, and you might be considering a barbecue or maybe doing something else in the sun, why not have a go at some topwater fishing? Trying some topwater lures for pike and other predators too, because you can have some great results doing it. <laughs>